Mother. No. Whatever impertinence, whatever evasion, smother it. Your long boyhood is over. In an hour, you will be a husband. I know. But, Mother... I'm afraid. Afraid of what? That I will not be able to love her. Love is not a thing one is able or not able to do based on some magic. Some chemistry. That is for plays. Love is determination. Love is a choice one makes. You take someone in marriage and you choose to love them. You do not give yourself any other option. Because marriage is difficult. Full of pains. And the life of a royal is lonely. So you grab someone and you hang on. You love and you love hard because if you do not, All the way from Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to <sighs> Queen Charlotte, our Bridgerton <laughs> podcast with Mary and Blake. It is a podcast dedicated to all things Bridgerton on Netflix, so sit back, relax, and let's spill some tea. I had the wrong document up on my you screen. You absolutely did. Yep. And again, ladies and gentlemen, if that is not 100% <laughs> proof that we read that intro every single time, yeah. then I don't know what to tell you. Hey, you know, some people have pre-recorded <laughs> stuff. Blake and I like to be authentic. We're right in all yes, the time. Yes, yes, We are yes. dedicated to you, there the listener. Go. Now we are on the correct Google Doc. <laughs> hey, who said we needed to be prepared for a podcast? Me. <laughs> Whoever said that we were professional? Oh, goodness gracious. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Here we are in the penultimate episode. Wait, who are you? My name is Mary. <laughs> they know me. I know, but, you know, we get a formula my here. My name is Mary Larson. <laughs> I had the wrong document up, Blake. <laughs> and I'm just Blake. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> See, that's the reason why I wanted so to say So stinking it. cute. Hey, speaking of just Blake, yes. I came up with a new t-shirt idea. What's that? You could have one that says, I'm his Venus, and I'm her farmer, George. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it. Looking for my farmer, George. We're totally going to do it. Yeah, all those things. Looking for my Venus. <laughs> oh. You could have one that's like totally in, and you could put, my garden is in bloom, and I'm looking for my farmer, <laughs> George. Oh, 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 oh. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the Bridgerton version of saying I'm single and ready to mingle. Oh, yes. DTF. <laughs> that's what that is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Well, Marketing this episode... genius you are. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I did it as I was like driving yesterday, and I left myself a voice note. I left a lot of voice notes for myself. Oh, okay. Good. Um, so I'm going to be perusing both devices in this episode. I mean, look at all these. These are all my voice notes. Holy smokes. I know. I'm she's like, got, and I need Ladies this, and gents, and she's, got at least, she's got at least 20 in there. Yeah. Yep. And this is what I put. T-shirt. He is my farmer, George. She is my Venus. Done. Uh, the next thing I have is not Queen Charlotte related. It is to get the Carol King show tickets at Theater by the Sea for us this summer. Oh. But the next one is Charlotte gives corn to the poor. So we're back to Queen Charlotte. Who needs Carol King when you can have uh, Queen Charlotte and T-shirt ideas? I love that. I love that. So, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We want to especially thank our friends at jointhenerdclan.com who have contributed um, to help make this mom and pop podcast shop going because unlike Queen Charlotte and her sons who were forced to get married, we are not royals and we do not just have like money thrust upon us. And we chose and so to get married. Which we did good. choose to get married, which is awesome. <laughs> um, but this married couple runs this podcast from our very own basement, thanks to donations at jointhenerdclan.com who keep this going. So yes. if you want to keep podcasts like this coming at you, feel free to contribute. And for those of you who have not yet left us a review on Apple Podcasts, it is the very best way yes. to search your podcast. Even if you listen on Facebook, YouTube, a different podcast app, so heading on over. Do so. Apple Podcasts, search Bridgerton with Mary and Blake, leave us a little written review there. The stars don't work, okay? You do stars plus a little sentence, and it yeah. warms my heart. Yes. So thank you all so much. All right, let's get into the show. Hi, 
All right, this was entitled Gardens in Bloom, Mary. Mm -hmm. Gardens in Bloom. I think my garden's in bloom. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> so your garden in bloom? I mean, my my garden's dealing with some issues right now. <laughs> Fair enough. My courses. <laughs> okay, let's just say that. Fair enough. All right, uh, so yeah, my garden's, garden's in bloom. taking a siesta. <laughs> my garden wants chocolate chip ice cream and a heat pad. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, this is an adult podcast. That that's another great <laughs> bit. <laughs> My garden does not need hold tending on. to. Wait, hold on. Let, 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 <laughs> let's just get we'll get the split shot oh, here. Why? Because, why? because we're talking about you got it. Ready to have some watermelon sparkling water. Give me my moment of peace. Get off get off my screen. <laughs> For friends who do not watch the video version, I'm sorry. Oh, All right. man, Marvin, that was good stuff. So Gardens okay. in Bloom. All right, sorry, I'll go back to go my back shot. To you. I'll Thank go you. back to my shot. There we go. All right, Gardens in Bloom, which is obviously a reference to what they were talking about uh, in the present day about uh, about uh, what's her name? What's her name there? Uh, Violet, her garden being in bloom, and that she was happy about it, and uh, and then uh, and then uh, Charlotte. Letting the garden die, like yes. quite literally letting the Let garden die. die. Oh man, Oof. sent shivers up my spine. I'll tell you that, and uh, and then also uh, as well, uh, it was written by Nicholas Nadini. You should know that name because he wrote the last episode, episode one hundred four, holding the king, and it was directed by. Once again, Tom Verica, who has directed every single episode of Queen Charlotte so far and is probably one of the lead directors for Bridgerton as well, as we have come to refer to him here at Mary and Blake Media. He is the Shonda Land All-Star. So that is that. Marvin, mm -hmm. how many cups of tea are you giving this episode? This fine episode gets 4.8 cups of tea. Okay, fair enough. Uh, for me, I'm going to be in like the 4-6 range. Totally get it. 4-6 range. I may even go as low as 4-5, four, 4-5 four, mm -hmm. There's some things in here that we we gotta we gotta oh, yeah. question. It's a little. We, we got a question. I yeah. agree. And and, and I, well, well, we'll get there when we get there. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna go to the split shot, Mary. Okay. All right. All right. Because this this is our this is what we do here. Okay. By the way, cameras upgraded to 4K. Oh my. All the cameras 4K. On the day where I didn't blow dry my hair, I'm just letting it air dry. I have like natural minimal makeup because I'm heading to Pokemon Club at our kids' school in a little bit. Yes. Hey, it's all good. Hey, it's we're all good. good. We're good. All yes. right. So you're GVG. You're good. You're bad. And you're great. My good is Agatha. I actually thought that this should have been the clip that you played, to be honest, when well, Agatha is mm. in the um, gallery with Violet and she's like, nobody tells our stories. We've got like we've got gardens too, all right? And nobody talks about marriages and the love that we want to have as women who are of the older generation. Mm -hmm. What the heck? All we do is gossip and like set people up and I our love stories about playing that one. are worthy of being told. And I yes. was like, this is what Queen Charlotte is. Queen Charlotte is Agatha's speech right here about how like the more complex um, relationship stories also have a place, not just the like licking an ice cream spoon Ooh. or touching a hand glove, which, but like, let's be uh, real. I'll never turn it down. No, nope, I will never turn down swan sex or bouquet sex. Like, give it to me. <laughs> yes, love, love, love. But the nuances that happen within relationships that are hard, just like what Queen Charlotte in the clip that you did play, it is hard. It can be lonely life um, at times, not just if you're a royal, but anybody. And so I loved, loved, loved what Agatha was saying to Violet. And I just feel like that was a beautiful encapsulation of the journey that we go on in Queen Charlotte in mm. general. My bad, Lord Ledger. Deal with you later. Put a little pin in that. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Yeah. Then my great is Charlotte just saying, like, you sold me off to be a queen, so I'm going to go be a queen. And that she did. Yep. And I also loved when she was like, you're my only friend. Oh, you precious little thing. I'm not you, your friend. You little thing. I've been talking to your, your mother-in-law this whole time. Crap. Yeah. I loved it. Well, loved I mean, it. All Queen Charlotte. All right. Give me yeah. your GBG, Blake. Yeah. All right. My good is I love the scene between Princess Augusta and Queen Charlotte when after Augusta's like, listen, you're all set mm -hmm. now. Like, you got a baby in you. Like, you're good. You don't even have to see George anymore. We're good. We get a real good sense of what Augusta actually truly cares about as it relates to the the crown and 
and Charlotte's role within the royal family, mm-hmm. right? Which means nothing, right? She is just a vessel. She is she's not even a vessel. She's an she's a, an incubator, <laughs> right? Uh, and to further dehumanize Charlotte, Augusta then later says, as Charlotte is getting her portrait painted, yeah, why don't you paint her skin? Uh, why don't you do that? All set. Uh, and then, of course, Charles like, no, like, no, we're gonna we're gonna paint my skin the way that it, that it is. But mm-hmm. like, I just I love the dynamic that they are setting up between the two, and I I love that scene because it did so much between those two people. Right? Y- you never, ever, ever, ever want to tell your audience what they're supposed to feel, right? Like, because if you if you start manufacturing what your audience is supposed to feel then you're doing it wrong. Yes. You, you can have the music swell all you want. You can have someone look tearfully away in a, at a sunset and, 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 and die in another person's art. Like, none of that matters. Mm-hmm. You're, what matters is setting up a relationship and sh- setting up drama between people that you can infer, that you can, that, that when you can see the subtext of what is happening between the two people. And that right there, while, a, a, I mean, you know, Bridgerton is, has never been known, or the Bridgerton verse has never been known for for subtle. Um, that is a, a terrific way to show the struggle and the, the the relationship dynamic between the two and the value shared between the two. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent, excellent stuff. My bad for me. <sighs> I feel a little icky. Okay. I feel icky with Lord Ledger and Lady and Lady Danbury in this episode and my sense is that I'm supposed to be really happy for her Mm -hmm. and my sense is that we're supposed to back this like yay we there's someone he understands her and she has she can let her garden be be in bloom and we and I don't get that at all I don't feel that at all I feel icky from it like, yes, like there is a sense of like, okay, this is forbidden. Like she knows that she's not supposed to do it. And the show has even set us up f- for the idea that his wife sucks because she's racist. Mm-hmm. And like, it makes you kind of feel like, well, I mean, his wife sucks. So maybe it's okay. But I still feel icky. Yep. And I think that's hard for me to accept. Yeah. That's hard for me to accept. All right. I have two greats though. Uh, as you all know, I'm all about flashy. Give me all the flash, baby. Mm-hmm. And I got some good flash. It's, it's, it's not in your face flash, but it's flash. Okay. Right? A little flash. Brimsley, holding out his hand. Oh. Ready to comfort Charlotte. Yes. Can't do it. Yes. Wants to be her friend. Can't be her friend. Yes. Loved all of it. Give me all that mo. Mm-hmm. Give me all the slow-mo. Give me the reaching out. No person in their right mind is ever going to do that in real life. It ain't going to happen. Why not? Because I nobody does, nobody does that in real life. No, I, w- I would do more. You're like even a, awkward ooh, doing it now. Ooh. No, but that's what I'm saying. Like I wouldn't just like slowly go in and out. That's I would what I'm do, saying. Like, an awkward like do I do I do I do I like start stop start stop stop start. Like if you went like oh uh, like okay, I get it. But like to like hold out your hand like it's just dramatic for the it sake of dra- drama. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No one in real life is ever doing that. Okay, Blake. That's why I'm saying it's Flash. Okay. All right? I love the Flash. Me too. I'm in on Flash. Good. It's not in your face, Flash, but it's Flash. It's like fla. It, <laughs> it's flas. Yeah, flas Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm in on that. Uh, I thought that was great. A good, a, again, another good rep, re, visual representation of what they're trying to show you. He is a servant, and she is the queen. Yet it shows that the relationship kind of goes beyond that of servant and queen. It's enough so much that he feels inclined to reach out and lend his support when he knows he shouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm. Right? It, it, that it's not his place to do so. Yet at the same time, he knows enough to say, uh, "I'm going to stand back here, and I'm just going to I'm going to be my five steps away and do what I can." Mm -hmm. Right. Love that. I love all of it. And even that knowing look that Brimsley gives Charlotte as she's telling her son, hey, um, 
you all about love and everything like he is there looking at her there for her it's 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 important that they showed Brimsley at that moment, which makes Agreed. me think. Mm-hmm. By the way, here's a an early scribbling prediction. Okay, uh, it's it, well, it's it's not. It's more of a take refinement, hmm. or a take. I mean, we can just call it a scribbling prediction, unless you have other ones. Um, you can have multiple ones. No, no, it's more of like a a take reinforcement. Okay. Okay. It's I, I'm reinforcing the take, and that is. At some point, mm-hmm. Brimsley is going to have to choose love or the queen. Mm. And he chooses the queen. Interesting. That, that to okay. me, it, again, it's one of the only reasons why I'm okay with the whole Reynolds-Brimsley thing. It, and uh, showing the amount and in, 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 in dedicating the amount of time that it takes to give us a, 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 an actual relationship. Mm-hmm. As opposed to spending more time with Charlotte and George or whoever, like, yeah. I, if there if the result is one of them has to choose between love or their duty, right? And ultimately, maybe they choose the duty, whatever. Mm-hmm. I think I like that a lot. Okay, but uh, my other great when this happened in the show, I for some reason it just got me when the kids go up to Charlotte and they're like. Yeah, you think you're all smart and everything. Uh, just so you know, uh, mm, George is the one that's supposed to, you know, kind of be in charge here. And Your brother George. Yeah, the brother George. Prince and, of Wales. And uh, just, you know, we're not going to get married until he gives his blessing, and he ain't going to give the blessing. And she looks at George and says, why don't you do me a favor? Give the blessing for the- Be for a the, good boy. Just be a good boy. Give me the blessing. And he goes, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, but that's not the great. The great is the little laugh. That she has <laughs> at the end of it. Yes, she's like, <laughs> like <laughs> you little, you yeah. you play with toy soldiers. You yes. guys got no idea. You don't know who this is. My with. game. Yes. I've been doing this for a long time. Mm-hmm. Don't mess with mom. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. Like, like <laughs> you're you're all you're. I love you. This is a succession line. I love you, but you're not serious people. Ooh. That's what that comes down to. Love it. Uh, and it's it's a great line, and the when it's said in succession, and it, it's it's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. But in this context, it's fantastic. I love Perfect. you, but you're not serious people. <laughs> oh, it's great. Love it. Love it. Love awesome. it. Awesome. That was such a great little tidbit in characterization for for Charlotte and the way that she does uh, her the, the way that she's the queen and she knows it and she, she, does. she and she runs the show and it's fantastic. So, uh, so that is that. That is my GBG, my good, my bad, and my great. Marvin, Fantastic, love. How else, uh, now that Lumos is here? Lumos um, is here. As the you podcast can, see in the video. can officially begin. Yes. Uh, it's funny that you use the word, uh, the word run the show because um, we talk about the music that was used in this episode. Oh, yes, that's right. it's Beyonce who run the world, girls. Uh, yes. All right, let me see if I can pull it up. And Hold on. this happens while Lady Danbury decides she's going to get on top. Oh, she yeah. She runs the world. She doesn't want to be looking at those gold and black flowers anymore. No, thank you, ma'am. This is my this is my time. This is my time down here. She's going to pull a Goonies reference right there. And this <laughs> is also the time that Charlotte says, show me the king. And so yes. this is both the women saying, uh-uh-uh, I'm not going to let life rule me and let all these people tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. All right, here we go. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I love this in general for this entire show just because it is so female focused and like showing how, um, you know, they're making these moves and making these decisions. Even when Lady Danbury's husband was alive, she was the one that was like pulling all the strings and and making everything happen. So these are two very powerful women who also in this episode verbalize that they're going to now be friends, which is really important to have that female friendship um, as well. And together they're going to be making choices and making moves that affect them and affect really the rest of the society, which is super cool. Yeah. So, you know, we have Lady Danbury who stands up in this episode and introduces her son to the princess. Um, and we're going to see what comes of that, but we know what comes of it. We know that the, the lineage does continue on in one way or another. Um, and yeah, Queen Charlotte saying like, I will not, I will not lay down and stay in this castle with 
my crazy mother-in-law, right. and not see my husband, who I keep writing to, we're going to make this happen. So awesome choice of music. Once again, using Queen Bee. Oh, yeah. You can never turn down Queen no. Bee. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Queen Bee is the one person Mary would question our marriage for. That, that, <laughs> and that's okay. I'm, okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I like, at the end of the episode, that Queen Charlotte just goes in there and, and says, okay, if I'm going to be queen, I'm going to be queen. What I especially loved is that Broomsley could almost read her mind. You know, she's going up the stairs into Buckingham House with her brother following behind. And he's just like, yep, well, you're just going to learn how to deal with this. You naughty girl. You were, I sold you off to be the queen. And so yeah. you have to be better. And you see her stop and the wheels kind of turn in her head where she's like, oh, I am the queen. Yes. And she just says, Broomsley. And he knows. He right says, away. stop the carriages. Yep. And I thought that that was so cool because he has been trying to encourage her to find her voice, encourage her to like stand up for herself. He has also had it with not knowing what's going on with the king also. Sure, sure. So he is all in Team Queen. And it's not like they talked on the ride over where she was like, you know what? I should just show up there. You know? <laughs> they didn't have that. So I love how in sync Brimsley is, whether it's from the beginning time like this to seeing in the future. I'm here for it. Yep. I, I think the show has done a spectacular job with the relationship shared between Brimsley and Charlotte. Uh, I get I have a much better understanding of the two. Yes. And it's I, I, I appreciate that relationship far more now than I ever did. Uh, and then I would even say too, obviously, the relationship shared between Lady Danbury and Queen Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I think that relationship has, has is very well uh, thought out, mm -hmm. uh, especially given the events of this last episode. Uh, I mean, I mean, let, let's just look at it, you know, for what it is. When Charlotte has nowhere else to go after even going to her brother, mm -hmm. what does she do? She decides, I'm going to Danbury. Because she's the only person that's actually ever been honest with me. And she's the only... Like, from from day one, everybody has either had some sort of subversion with uh, Charlotte. Or somebody has lied to her in mm -hmm. some way. Or indirectly lied to her in yep. some way. Right? No one is above board with her. Uh, and... Lady Danbury is the only person that has been above board. Mostly, yes. And, well, that's the thing. <laughs> I like that, too. Yeah. Because, for the most part, it's above board. Because we also have this... We have her speaking to the princi princi Princess Dow... Well, the, the Dowager yeah, Princess. The, yes. And we don't know how much she's told her. We don't know how honest she's been with her. We don't know how much she's kept from her. And... Queen Charlotte does not know right. that like the most hated person in her life right now has been someone that her only friend has been meeting with. So I wonder, like, do these talks, does this inside scoop stop now that Charlotte is with child, you know, and now that Princess Agatha is living in the castle? Is she like, we don't need you anyway? Because she has to go and like make an appointment to go show her son. So to me, I feel like her job was done. So now she can just be a true friend to Charlotte because she's not snitching well, on her. Well, the better question... And I'm not well. I'm not saying that your question is invalid. I'm saying the better question to ask is, or the more pertinent your question, question. Yeah, the more pertinent question <laughs> to the relationship is, does Charlotte find out? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, uh, and that I, that's why I say it's more pertinent, right? Because if she does find out, how do they maintain that level of friendship? And what mm -hmm. happens between the two, right? Uh, number one in the immediate, right? And then number two in the long-term game because they do maintain a, a, a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Like we know that. We know that in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, so what then do they, what, what then do they do to repair any of that trust if it is found out, right? So that, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big deal. Or does Charlotte look at it and say, I get it. I get it because we needed to take care of yeah. each other. Like, like you needed to do you. I needed to do me, and and that's that. Because can you blame Agatha for for doing 
what she needed to do. No, and from what we saw on screen so far, she really doesn't share too awfully much. It's yeah. more like, actually, what I've seen it do is put the princess on ice and, and thin ice and say, okay, like, I've got you. And, yeah. you know, trying to stand up for for equality um, and also kind of throwing around that I know more than the, than the queen does. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of in trouble right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I... I agree with you. I think it's okay. If you were Charlotte, Mary, mm -hmm. and you found out that somebody, like somebody that's your friend, right? My like one friend. Your one friend is going to your mother-in-law and give her- I the, wouldn't take it well. Yeah, that's that's my question. I would not take it well. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't think that you would. <laughs> Tauruses uh, never forget. Yeah, no, they, they don't. Yeah. Ever. Nope. Welcome to the most stubborn sign. But I, I don't, <laughs> not to say she's a Taurus. I am. Yeah, no, Mar yeah, Mary is. Absolutely. <laughs> 100. If there was more of a definition of Taurus, I don't I know what it is. protect my herd. Yeah, it's Mary's picture. But if you that, miss That's what me. it is. It's just Mary there <laughs> with a headshot. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's me. Mm -hmm. uh, um, all right. So, you, you know, Marvin, I, I think that. Uh, we should probably talk about all of my bullet points that I texted myself. Uh, well, yeah, obviously. Uh, but we should probably talk about the Lord Ledger of it all to get it off our chest and yeah, to not to just as Charlotte giving corn to the poor. <laughs> what okay. what what are your what what are we doing here? What are we what are okay. we doing? We're having an affair, Blake. We're I having know. an affair and we're having conflicted feelings about this. Okay, so first off, let's just let's just table the fact that this is Violet's dad. Well, that's why I'm feeling Ugh. icky about it. I'm feeling icky in general, okay? Well, yeah. It's yeah. an affair in general. This is a married man. Yes. Um who opens up, you know, they go for their rambles, which I love that. I want to call whenever I'm able to go for a walk again. Thank you, Achilles Tendon, for still giving me pain. <laughs> um, Even that is, is is bordering inappropriate. Going on their ramblings is inappropriate in that time. Yeah, but even now. If I were I would to go say, for a walk with a neighbor who was... Well, consistently yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, I don't, so I'm here for it. It's, it's, and then it's bordering up, inappropriate. Yeah, and then and then she's like, oh, whatever. I don't really miss my husband. He's like, I don't, I don't really like my wife. So cool. Like, let's be buddies and ramble. I loved their ramblings. I loved what they talked about. And if he wasn't married, I would feel a lot better about it. Mm -hmm. A lot better about it. Um, and then he just shows up, bold as brass. Old with the as hat. brass. Look at him standing there. That's creature. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Old as brass. <laughs> Sorry. You're a wizard, <laughs> Harry. Yeah, just shows up. I'm not here. I won't make a sound because I'm not yeah. here. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, like, uh, once ugh. again, if you weren't married, I'd be like, come check out the yes. garden. Like, <laughs> yes, please. Let's not be in my garden together. Um, Because... I find him so deliciously dashing and I love his persona mm -hmm. and I, you know, in Bridgerton we get to see all of this um, romance, that, you know, without even having to like hook up, just the way sure. that they interact. And I loved it. I loved it. If he wasn't married. Then you throw in the fact that it's Violet's dad. Yeah. Okay. So he's making this crown. Yeah. Violet she still got the crown, the crown, by the way. She still got the hat. She gets an orgasm putting the crown on. <laughs> Okay, like that is a magical crown. And then she talks with Violet. You know, my my garden finally bloomed. It was a late bloomer. Yeah. How can when we, I did. How, wait, how can we monetize the orgasm hat? Uh, we need to find a way to monetize like, the I orgasm hat. To. I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, you could just say looking for my farmer, George, and have the hat. That's <laughs> That won't make any sense. No. Okay. But whatever. Anyway. It doesn't matter. Um. So... <sighs> When she's in the gallery mm -hmm. talking to Violet, and she's like, Violet, I'm so happy you told me you were horny. I love it. I was horny, too. N not with my husband. It was awesome. But then she says, but when I got that, when my garden didn't bloom, I cherished it, mm -hmm. and I nurtured it. Great. So are we led to believe that this, like, we nurtured rumpy, it with your dad. This rumpy-pumpy <laughs> session, which happens yeah. oh, in Who it, Run the World Girls. Oh, it happens. And... Like, how long did you tend this garden? Because the way that she talked about it. Well, the first time it, was probably about 30 seconds. 
<laughs> the way she talked about it made me feel like this went on oh, and yeah. on. Or, or, here's the other thing I thought. All right. So we're going to get a little open and honest, friends. And by this time, you've listened to this much of the podcast episode, so you're probably not like my mom and dad, okay? And okay. if you are, whatever. You learned how to work a podcast. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> so. <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations. Hold on. Let's, let's, get, let's get Mary here, right? What? Right. Right, what? Mary single shot. There we oh go. Oh my god. Okay, we're, we're with going my grapes, right in. my watermelon seltzer and Lumos. <laughs> Thank you, Blake, in all my glory. All right. So, um I have shared in some other podcasts that I um am a survivor of sexual assault and I am not saying I am saying that like what happened to Lady Ag- Agatha was in my opinion ugh, it's so tricky right because like here she is she's groomed since she's age three she didn't want to be having sex with this man mm-hmm. and yet she was his wife and we didn't really see her protest so but no matter what she has terrible terrible feelings about sex with this sure. man and sex in general and so I vividly remember um, when I s- became like. When I fooled around post my assault Mm -hmm. and I did it with a guy who I never saw again. Oh, and he was uh, very sweet and kind. And he was just like, um, just, you know, like I go to a different school and I don't know if you're looking for a relationship. And I went, I'm not looking for a relationship. (laughs) And I like was very happy that I wanted to be physical Mm -hmm. and I felt like so proud of myself for just being like, oh, I found this gentleman attractive. I loved having a little fun with him. Whatever. Goodbye. See you later. And he almost looked at me like I was some jabroni being like, whatever, <laughs> like like some Jersey short, like, let me call you a cab. Yeah. But it felt so empowering to me. Mm-hmm. So when I watched this episode, if I was able to kind of pause the fact about the Lord Ledger being Violet's dad and being married, what I saw was Agatha, who for the first time, after going through um, assault in her own regard, you know what I mean? Like not having sex with someone who she never really wanted to have sex with, who she was made to marry and sex was never a pleasurable thing for her, for her to claim that and then to be like, no, I'm going to be on top. I'm not going to have the flowers do this. I'm going to be in charge of this. I'm going to be in charge of the rate and the pace and all this kind of stuff. And so, yes, she was having like ecstasy in sexual orgasm way, but also in this ownership of like, I can claim this and this can be mine. And I and I loved that for her. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm so conflicted because there's a lot of it where I'm like, Ugh. and yet there's this other part where I'm like, yes, you get it. You get it, girl. When she put that crown on. Yeah. That's what I got out of it. It wasn't like Violet's dad was so hot. But instead, I was able to take ownership of this, which was a bad thing for me. And I claimed it. Sure. Um, All right. So let's let's go down that road. Okay. Let's go down that road. Okay. Because I I, I think, well, you you certainly went down a road that I want to go. Oh. And, and I think my next question was going to be this. Okay. So that is, what does the show want you to feel? Right? Because I don't know. Is it is it unfair of the show to be like, yeah, Lord Ledger's wife sucks. Like we know that. Okay, she sucks. Yeah, she's a terrible, racist, like selfish. And, and like within context, like within context, yes, still terrible, racist, selfish. Yes. Yes. Bad mom. But I would probably say she's more of the norm than anything within context. Yes. Okay. So let's just look at it like that. Okay. But regardless, the show is presenting us a scenario with our 21st century sensibilities. Right. And it Mm -hmm. should. Right. Mm -hmm. So we, the show obviously wants you to not like Violet's mother. Yes. for, For a very specific reason. Yes. And that feels a tad manipulative to me okay because i mean it helps and, and explain I, why lord ledger would be searching right elsewhere. and that's why i'm saying it's a tad manipulative right because it's just setting the stage for you to be okay with the fact that this guy is is uh going to pound town with uh uh lady Agatha. danbury yeah and i'm not sure if i'm okay with it well and that's the thing it's i think it's a really interesting dynamic because i feel like a lot of things in bridgerton 
are pretty straightforward. Yeah. You are going to like these two be together. Oh, look at them. Look at their cute little romance. Ooh, yay. Yes. Love it. But Queen Charlotte has just flipped it, right? I didn't like George for a long time. Mm. This is a complicated marriage that they have. We have Agatha, who is, was in a, in a loveless marriage right? and now is, is doing this. Um, I think that this show is just doing things very, very differently on purpose. And yeah. I don't think they are trying to tell us how we're supposed to feel. Interesting. And I think people who have been cheated on uh, while they were with somebody are going to most likely feel <laughs> a very different way than others who have done the cheating and it worked out great for them. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, I, I have friends who did cheat on and ended up marrying those people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have other friends who've been cheated on and had to get a divorce because it, uh, it tore their family apart. So yes. I feel very conflicted about it. I really do. And I feel super awkward that Violet's telling, uh, so Agatha's saying all this, like, oh my God, my garden was the best garden in the world. <laughs> we had watermelons, we had squash, we had flowers, we even had honeybees because the nectar was a flowing. And saying right. all this, and that's why I'm wondering, like, is she just saying that she learned how to get jiggy with it? Mm -hmm. And then Lord Ledger was number one, and then she got to go and, like, taste the rainbow? Or. <laughs> Sorry. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> is, or, or are we supposed to believe that like she had a long time relationship with Lord Ledger? Yeah. All right. Here's the thing. If he only made her one birthday crown. Right. So here's or the she thing. only saved one. But so if the sex does, is that good. Like, like in your situation, crown. It, it, like in your situation, if it's just, hey, I, I took command of this. I owned it and I did it. And that's what opened up. Let's yes. just say the floodgates. Right? I would that, feel better with that. I'm, I would be more on board. Yes. Like, right. Like I'm okay. I, I, I get it. Like, like it's a one-time thing. It, it just, it, it revealed a world to you that you didn't know. Shining, shimmering, splendid. Yes. New world. The orgasm hat, it, it did its job. And then you, yeah. you kept the orgasm hat because it reminded you of that time. It opened up your world and you did the whole thing. But Great. then you took a cue from Violet and started to bang all the footmen. Right. And hey, maybe that's what happens. They're always available. <laughs> Ready, willing, and able, if you will. Uh, okay. I can get on board. If, however, this is the thing that continues. Which, ooh, like, they're I, friends. Right. They so, enjoy each other's rambles. Here's the other thing. Will they get brambles? Here's up the there? other thing. Who has? <laughs> There's going to be a lot worse things than horse pies. Um, does Violet find out about Agatha, you know? She's going to have to. Well, no, because if it's just a one-time thing, then, hey, he had no evil scene. Then don't no talk about your sex life, but Agatha. If, but if Agatha is re yeah. not referring to the dad, she's referring to... Yeah, just sex in general. Like, listen, yeah, man. Like, just... Sleeping around's great. This thing happens... <laughs> Like and, or just sleeping with someone who's not your husband after your husband dies, right? Like and and because like where she where she's coming from as yes. a person, yes, I loved it. Agree when she said, "I hated this guy for so long, mm -hmm. but and when he died, I was happy." Yep. But then after that, I didn't know what to do because all of my life was catered to, to him. him. Since I was three. And I didn't have a place. I don't have a place. Like, think of that. Mm -hmm. Like, y you may not have been, you know, mm -hmm. uh, ready to marry me since you were three years old. Nope. But you can relate to the fact that, like, you've shaped your life around me and, mm -hmm. and I you. Mm -hmm. And if I died, you would, like, you would be in a better place than Agatha was. But you would still kind of be like, what do I do now? Like, I don't have a husband. Like mm -hmm. I have to redefine myself. Mm -hmm. And I know me. Like if if you were to pass away, like I'd be a I I I wouldn't function. Like mm -hmm. and emotionally, I I I couldn't do it. No, exactly. Well, and that's and that's a different level, like you said, than Agatha. Like we do love each other. Right, but like you get the idea of like yes. where's my place in all of which, this? Which which is what Violet is going through. Yes. Yeah, and so I once again I just love this show because it's bringing this about. You know, many like 
many people are widows or widowers. And, and I, sorry. many of them have this happen at a point in their life where they could have a different garden at some point. Yes, and that's why I thought uh, about playing the Agatha scene Violet. that you suggested, Mary. I, I, I gave it serious thought, and then I decided to not do it only because I like the idea of love, number one. Like, I'm always a sucker for that. You are. Uh, I'm always a sucker for that. And, and, like, you have a choice in what you do. You know, if it is applicable to who you marry or if it's applicable to who you share your garden with or whatever, like it's that choice. And when you make that choice, you stick with that choice and you you love that choice for all it's worth until you can't anymore. And that's what Queen Charlotte was saying. Right. And and but I felt like the idea of choice is what Agatha, Agatha and Violet and Charlotte are all. Um, surrounded by at this moment, you know, whether it is in the past or in the future, right? Like it's that choice is important. And the fact that, you know, and, and the fact that they are even, even able to have a choice, mm -hmm. right? In any of this, uh, it's, it's a big deal, right? And so, and then to highlight that choice with another odd relationship that I didn't think I would be interested in but now that it's been set up this way I'm kind of in on it now tell me which is Lady Danbury's title is contingent yeah upon her son who she doesn't even really know and he doesn't prefer her in fact he prefers his wet nurse his nanny the, the wet, wet nurse nanny whatever well, wet nurse Stats are for like, nerds. I'm wearing my shirt suckling. for a reason. So this is a difficult thing. This is an interesting thing for me because like neither Queen Charlotte nor Agatha seem very motherly, com especially compared to Violet. Violet like wanted to be a mom forever oh, yeah. and it's been like mom, mom of the year. OK, yes. very few people can like stand up to Violet Bridgerton's level of awesome momness, aside mm -hmm. from the fact that she forgot to tell. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Talk about the birds and the bees. Um but that being said, it made me kind of sad about Lady Danbury that she didn't have a relationship with her kids. Like, we got to see her have such a wonderful relationship with Simon. And I don't know if that's because she regretted what happened or if really she's kind of just looking out for uh, the downtrodden. Um, or if she's more trying to, like, look out for that facet of society that if, if he pushed... Simon away then there wouldn't necessarily be an heir for the Bassett name and like mm -hmm. no we need to keep this going so just it brought a little intrigue into me as to like why did she love on Simon so much when she doesn't really seem to love on her kids or does this change it does her having to bring her son into the limelight uh is she now able to see her children without necessarily being reminded of her husband like maybe the kids you know she she likes it oh his big babies like maybe she saw them too much as a piece of him yeah and she didn't want them around um but even the way she that she was talking to him to her, her little son, Dominic, I just didn't, I didn't feel the love and that kind of... It's very transactional. Yeah, it didn't make me love her. Yeah. And, and I know that she's a woman of business and is, is very focused, mm -hmm. but like, it's it's tough because on the flip side, maybe if she hadn't been forced into this, she would have said, you know, my life plan does not include having kids. There's a lot of people who've made the choice that they don't want to have kids. And great, great for them. Yes, That's awesome. So I'm wondering like, is that her? Is she someone who was like, I never wanted to be a mom. That was just wasn't in the cards, and I was forced to do it. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness we can afford a nanny. And like, I love my kids; they are my kids. But you know, yeah, because there isn't really much mention of her children, no, at all no. in the Bridgerton verse, other than this episode. But right? she does take care of Simon. And mind you, it's not to say she's that she's shunning her kids. Yes, they probably they seem very well taken care of. I wonder if she sees Simon as her. Uh. I don't want to say salvation, but she is sees as her sees him as her redemption for her children. Or if she just becomes really close with his mom. And it's more of like, no, this is what I got to do to help his mom. Yeah, okay, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um I, I here's But like like you said, now this calls into question 
about passing it on through the generations about having this title. Now, we do know that Lady Danbury stays Lady Danbury, that she yes. has the first ball of every season. So we do know, thanks to season one of Bridgerton, that, that, that society has been forever changed. Yes. So will we get the conclusion of this? In this season, we've got one episode less left. Are we going to have the Princess Dowager and Parliament be like, yes, it is handed down generation by generation? Or are we, the viewers, just supposed to know that, like, is this, there's a lot of questions, right? There's a lot of questions that we're now left with where there's one episode left between now and going back to the Bridgerton verse because we're not being told that there's going to be a season two of Queen Charlotte. Mm. This might just be it. This might be the story that they're here to tell. Do we need this question answered? Or are we just going to have to be led to believe that she figured out a way? All right. So he, now we're talking about intent, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So what is the intent uh, 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 for the Bridgerton verse, right? Are you, are you, is the intent of the creators for you to be able to watch Queen Charlotte separately and just be happy with that? No. Or is the intent for you to watch the first two seasons of Bridgerton, watch Queen, Sh Queen Charlotte, and then move on. Yes. And they're supposed to be consumed at the same time. Yes. Okay. Because, I mean, even in this episode, Violet touches upon uh, Gregory and Anthony and Eloise. She talks about all three of them. Oh, yes. Anthony's on his honeymoon. Yes, because of what just happened in season two. Yes. Gregory's gotten big, which probably means Gregory's going to be recast, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And Eloise is still fighting with Penelope. Yes, everybody. Remember that whole yes. <laughs> Lady Whistledown thing? Right. So, like... No, I'm. I believe you're supposed to. The way they do not want this to be a standalone show. Okay, so if that's the case, then I would say it does not need to be answered, mm -hmm. right? Because Agreed. it's it's at a point right now where we already know the answer, mm -hmm. and for them to like have a formal yep. thing, uh, I think would be. I mean, it would complete. Okay, and then it comes back to what do you, like, how do you. How do you define a complete story within a story, right? Or to me, yeah, because I don't need it answered. Like you said, we know the answer. We know that it works. So to me, I'm led with like, Lady Danbury is such a driven person. And mm -hmm. now she's got besties with the queen. Mm -hmm. Once again, the queen. Mm -hmm. The one who has just decided I'm going to be the queen and do what I want. Yes. So we just, part of me feels like I'm not going to need the answer. Right. Because everyone in that society, everyone in... Everyone who came to Lady Danbury's house is looking towards her, so she's going to be the one that finds a way, and I trust that she will. Plus, I know she will because we know the future. Yep. Do me a favor. Yeah. Just turn around and fix your uh, your, your earphones because you're pulling on them. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. And then just plug it back in. Why? <laughs> because it's driving me. I can hear it in my headphones. And it's driving me crazy. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, everybody. <laughs> Live broadcasting. All right. Here we go. Um. Yeah, so I, I think it just comes down to intent, right? And it comes down to how you define a, a complete story within a story, right? And what what matters, right? Because if, if the overall story matters, then no, you don't need to have this moment. However, I've always been one that if you tell a story, make it a complete story, right? It oh, may by the way, speaking of all those people showing up at her house, what the heck? What do you mean? Oh, with the Smith's Mice, the Bassets. Oh, oh, Everybody, yeah. Everybody, like, planned this. Got dressed, so we're showing up at her house unannounced. Yeah. She could have been in her underwear. She could have been <laughs> having her garden groom. Oh, yeah. Or taking, you know what yeah. I mean, done mm -hmm. some gardening. Mm -hmm. She could have been doing whatever. She could have been grooming they the garden. You never show know. show up. Like, a dozen people rudely show up. Yes. Without saying, hey, we would like to meet. Yeah. What are we going to do? You don't need, like, you don't need to surprise her. Don't even send a note. Yeah, not even a memo. Jerks, <laughs> jerks. Uh, yeah, it that. The, mm, mm, I agreed, but it also shows you their desperation, right? Like it shows you that they were. Where's your class? Where's your class? True, good point. Where, where's your brain? Money don't buy your class. <laughs> that is That's, a deep cut. You're welcome, Real that Housewives Mary. Of New York. That is a deep. That isn't money doesn't buy you class. Is that it? No! Yeah, money doesn't buy you class. Oh the my Countess. goodness, the Countess from uh, Real Housewives of New York. Yep. Wow, that's a deep cut right there, Mary. Good job. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> we might have to no. <laughs> exit to that song. Nope. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, it shows you their desperation at the very least, right? Like, these people are concerned, and they have every right to be concerned because, as Lord Butte says, there there's no provision for them to retain their mm -hmm. title. Like, it is what it, like, you did the thing, that's great for you. That doesn't mean you get to keep it. Lord Butte. All right, he so needs a piece of corn up somewhere. Oh yeah, he grind he his corn. About, no, I don't want to grind his corn. I hate him. <laughs> that's a, that's another deep cut. Bit of far Um, yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. I do love what you said about the garden reference. We got to see Charlotte saying, "Let's take down the food. Let's yeah. give the corn to the poor." She really does care about the destitute. Love, love, love. Yep. But then, of course, she's back out with Brimsley. He says, "What should we do?" Let it die. Let it die. And that's right after the Agatha Violet conversation yeah. about our gardens. And oh. it's like, <gasps> and here she has been writing the letters. You think about that stack of her letters that she's yeah. been just writing over and over and over to George, telling him everything, and he's not even getting it. Yep. Uh, getting into George, when Reynolds does go to check on him, yep. now George is yelling the word torture. Yes. So we were talking about torture before in the sense that like George was allowing it. He was kind of asking for it. He was asking for more of it. Now he is actually yelling the word torture, which to me says, this isn't that's what torture. I want anymore. Right. Let's, let's, I why don't we, want this. Why don't we pump the brakes a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, that's how it felt to me. And how Reynolds is now manhandled and thrown out. Yes. Ugh. Which just made you feel so victorious when... She comes in when Charlotte comes in oh! and, oh, you know, you should it. be glad that I'm not, you know, getting rid of you to the to the doctor. But when she gets George and she's like, I'm Venus, you know what? <laughs> Screw it. No. I'm Charlotte. I'm yeah. Charlotte. And this is our baby. And we need you to be George. We need you back. Yes. And he came back. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I started to cry. Oh, man. Yeah. How could and you it not takes cry? A lot, well, it takes a lot for me to cry. No, that's true. And shows. That's true. I'm a, I'm a cry. But this made me cry. It made me think of you. Really? Yeah. In what way? Eh, when you weren't well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not great, Bob. No, not, it's, it's not tough. Great. It's tough. Not it's great, tough when Bob. you go through, you know, struggles, um, particularly mental and emotional struggles. Yeah. Um, that don't necessarily have like an end heal date. You know, you break yeah. a bone, you you get sick, you have surgery, you have all these things, and there's like there is ideally an end heal date. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you're going through something that is more mental and emotional yeah. uh there isn't necessarily that and it can be very scary and very taxing and trying on the person obviously who's experiencing but also for their loved ones sure and you do try different things and you do sometimes have to have those kind of talks where it's like we need you we need you back like mm -hmm. you know um yeah so it was tough it was tough for me to watch because i know that in writing that the writer's room some people there had seen loved ones who they had to like talk to and, oh sure. You know what I mean? You could feel that. Yeah, and again, it, it comes it, it, it always comes back to well, first of all, it always goes back to the Godfather number 1. That's what that's a Mary and Blake commandment. All it's right. A Blake but, commandment. No, no, that's yeah. a Mary and Blake okay, media fine. commandment. Okay. Uh but no, it always comes back to again, it comes back to relatability. How as we as viewers can we relate to mm -hmm. these characters, mm -hmm. right? How like how, how do we how do we care about them? Yeah. Right? And uh, <laughs> The, the the number one task for any show, regardless of if it's a comedy, if it is a drama, if it is suspenseful, if it's sci-fi, the number one task any show has is, do I care about the people? And let me tell you, friends, it takes me a long time to care about people. And I yes. podcast about shows. Yes. And I care. Like we've, I care. Like we've said, it took you about two seasons to care about Uhtred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On The Last Kingdom. By the way, go to MiriamBlake.com. It's the <laughs> The Last Kingdom podcast with Mary and Blake. Um, so, yeah, the number one job is for you to care. And you care by relatability yes. and, and relationships and, and, this, and, and how those relationships evolve, mm -hmm. right? And the drama that's shared within those relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, so, But it always comes back to, do you care? Mm -hmm. And... I, I can say that I, I, I care not only about Charlotte and, and George, but I care about that relationship and yes. how that exists. So uh, And seeing so that, that stack of letters made me wonder, did Brimsley read every single one? Was this the one that she was writing for her brother to come and get her? Was this the first one? I doubt it. Like, maybe because she was so sad and he did that whole, like, should I touch her, should I not thing, yeah. that he's finally like, okay, what it, the heck is she writing? But part of me wonders, has he been reading them occasionally anyway, just to see what's been going on? Yeah. Like, why not? You know, you're Brimsley. You know how to reseal the wax. This isn't your first rodeo. Yeah, I, I seriously doubt that this is 
like it just so happens to be the first one. Like you know that he's checking every single one, being like, I need the dish because this girl won't open up to me and I'm supposed to help her in every single way. Yeah. So I feel like because he got the insight of those letters, that's how he knew to suggest, hey, go to your friend's house. Like you can you can still stay in England. Like you go do you. Um I loved when Charlotte asks if the princess is she still here? She hasn't fallen down the stairs or choked down a cube of meat. (laughs) I love it, love it, love it because that's the older Charlotte that we get to see with all of her wittiness and just kind of like bitchiness, Mm -hmm. you know, that she gets to share with with Brimsley. Um, so I love it. The other thing that I wanted to point out is we need to keep in mind that Charlotte is pregnant this entire time. So you think about all the extra hormones and emotions that people are going through. Oh, yeah. I mean, there is perinatal uh, depression and anxiety, just like there's postpartum depression and anxiety. There's sure. perinatal, like while you are currently pregnant. So she's got this like actual crazy amount of hormones and emotions, which her brother brother brings up in a rude way. Oh, you're just being emotional, which no woman who is pregnant wants to be told she's emotional. She knows it. Mm-hmm. She knows it, but don't use that as fuel against me but i'm saying all this because in general like had she not been pregnant she would be feeling lonely and sad and lied to but now you elevate it to this level that you can't even be with the husband at all no i'm saying elevate it to the level that you're pregnant yeah yeah like now you magnify it yeah you put all you put all the things together Mm -hmm. and it's just like woof Mm -hmm. that's a that's a storm and then augusta tells her augusta i don't know if you noticed this augusta used the, the swear word no what fortunate you're so fortunate, Charlotte, that oh, your family yeah. came to visit. When I got married, I never got to see my family again. You're so fortunate. And Charlotte doesn't even respond. And I was like, ooh, look at this show. Using the word fortunate twice yeah. in ways that actually like burn the people that it's yes. said to. It burned Violet. I'm fortunate. My husband's dead. Why yeah. would you say I'm fortunate? You know, and Charlotte, thank you. I'm a prisoner. I don't even see my husband. Yeah, I'm really fortunate. So I thought that was a really neat callback. Uh, good, good, great, good. Good pull there, Mary. Good pull. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't catch that. Good pull. Uh, awkwardness. I wrote down. I'm, read, I'm reading all my notes. Yeah, now. go go. So awkward that Violet tried to help make the birthday crown. Oh, let me help, Daddy. No. Yes. No brains. This mm. one's mine. Oh. Uh, loved when Violet said, "I almost asked a footman to lie on top of me." <laughs> I I lol. I laughed out loud. Every single time I've watched this, and I've watched this episode several times, yeah. and I'm like, oh God, it still gets me. Like, the actress just, she brought it so She's beautifully, yeah. where you're just like, oh my God, Violet. You could see her getting the hot flashes yes. over it. Like, yes. You know, the question I have for you, Mary, is we've talked about the relationships in the show and obviously caring about uh, uh, Charlotte and George, clearly caring about Charlotte and, uh, and Agatha mm-hmm. and how they're giving those relationships something that you can like attach yourself to. Yeah. I thought that I was going to get more of that between Agatha and Violet and or at least Ag- um Violet and the Queen in some respect. Hmm. And I'm going to tell you that I'm disappointed in how they've handled young Violet so far. Oh, okay. I don't see why Violet and Agatha are friends. In adulthood? In adulthood, the way that they are. I think just because they're part of the ton together. And that's why Agatha says we don't know each other. I think it's truly because of the ton and they're pretty much related now. That's what I think. They've just had two weddings that like related to each other. Yeah, but there it, there so seems in-laws. to be more than than that. Like I I mean a couple of years has gone by. And they've been hanging out, planning weddings, like yeah. so and probably Agatha has a small, you know, a little soft spot for Violet, so she's probably always been nice to her. Well, she banged her dad. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I love how Violet's like, "Oh, you know, this is this is what we would do. We'd make cr- I'd make crowns for my husband because my dad used to do it for me." And Agatha's just sitting there like, "I got a crown." Yeah, <laughs> I still got. That I know crown. what that is. I know that. I. I love that story still. Oh, the crown story. You know, it's funny because we were talking uh, previously about how I'd love to have um, Violet and Edmund's love story. Yes. But now kind of, I'm like, I'm actually interested in the future episodes of Regular Bridgeton to see if Violet hooks up with somebody. I'm actually to see like, That's, post, like yeah. maybe we don't need, you know how you're saying we don't need Edmund. Like it's held on such a high level that maybe we don't need that kind of a love yeah. story. Maybe we need this. Maybe we need like, hello, show us more mature woman, you know, getting it on. I like that actually. Me too. I I think 
not that she necessarily needs her own spinoff, but like imagine seeing this thread as like something that we continue to see as we see the rest of the Bridgerton crew get married off. Yeah, I think that's actually a good idea. And again, th- th- again, it, it boils down to intent, right? Yeah. Like how are you meant to consume Bridgerton? Because like, <sighs> is Queen Charlotte a required piece of viewing for Bridgerton? Or vice versa? No. Bridgerton, yes, for Queen Charlotte. Queen Charlotte, no, for Bridgerton. Okay. Then I wonder how they're going to introduce the idea of Violet opening up her garden for, for, for just, uh, just, opening up the doors. Simply. I mean, just imagine, just picture this. Picture her being at, like, you know, a little promenade or something, a uh, promenade, and, like, some guy just smiling at her. Or, like, her shoe breaking or something, and someone rescues her. Someone needs to rescue her. <laughs> Okay, from something. Like, she needs to fall. Something or small. Some, yeah, it doesn't need to be big. Yeah. It doesn't need to be public. And then, because this actress is so good, she just needs to have the eye where, like, he touches her hand or something, and then we're yeah. going to be like, oh. Oh, okay. And all of us Queen Charlotte viewers are going to be garden. Garden. <laughs> <laughs> but to the regular people, they're just going to be like, oh, that's the Bridgerton look of, like, we're going to bang. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, got anything else about this episode that you'd like to talk about? Nope, all of my notes now talk about the Peach's Lego set from Super Mario, and uh, (laughs) we're all set. It's just regular mom notes. No more Uh, corn given to the poor. All right. I don't know why I wrote that down. I was just so proud. I was like, look at Charlotte giving her corn. Like, why did I make a voice note about that? No idea. All right, let's close this bad boy out, shall we? We shall. I didn't do uh, Mighty Camp by class. I was I was gonna. I was gonna. Thank you for not. But I didn't. The tone deaf countess can stay in our distant memory. <laughs> Mighty Camp by class. Oh my class. goodness gracious. <laughs> Thank you oh, all so incredibly much for tuning in. Blake and I wanted to remind you that in addition to our Bridgerton podcast, of course, we have loads of other podcasts. We are doing weekly episodes covering the Harry Potter series. Yep. We podcasted about the uh, Rings of Power on Prime uh, and Prime, yeah. and um, House of the Dragon, but also one of our favorite stories that touches upon love in so many different ways is the show This Is Us. And yes, This Is Us is done showing, but I got to tell you, if you've never watched the series, mm-hmm. we're going to recommend to you, because we know that you're romantics at heart, to <laughs> watch This Is Us and listen to our podcast. We podcasted about every single episode of that show, and it is by far one of the favorite shows that we've ever podcasted yes. about. And if you've already watched the show, but you didn't necessarily listen along with do a rewatch because once again, we know you're romantic at heart and that show. Oh, swoon. I, I, I will tell you this. There are few things that change me. Uh, it, there have been a couple of shows that have changed me. Mm-hmm. And this is us is one of them. Agreed. I don't, I'm not saying it's the greatest show ever, no. but I'm saying it changed me and it, and, and for in a very great way. Yes. Uh, as, as a husband, as an, as a father. And I, it's just, yeah, go listen to it. Hey, it's well, very personal for Mary and I. And thank you so much for leaving your ratings and reviews and Apple Podcasts. We read them. It warms our heart. And on that note, my name is Mary. And I'm just Blake. Go out there and brew some tea.